Well, uh, let's start off. This right. is, uh, I can start our conversation. We're kind of leading off from um, mentioning, we mentioned a comment early in um, one of my YouTube videos that you are, uh, they're the one who put together the Black Flag Coalition, right? Correct, correct. Um, and I kind of did it in a, uh, I guess almost like a moment of disappointment, I guess would be the, the best way to put it. Um, it was pretty late. It was like three o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I had been going through a few threads on different, um, different groups and stuff like that. And uh, I kind of started noticing a trend of people who were on both sides of the fence, whether it be ANCAP or ANCOM or, you know, whatever flavor in between. And they were actually trying to have a legitimate discussion, you know, with no animosity or anything like that. And they genuinely wanted to understand the other person a little better. Um, but the problem was that it just got so drowned out by it's just the rabble of everything, you know, just the back and forth arguing and the people that just wanted to stick to their bias and their, I guess, preconceived notion of the other team. And uh, it was just kind of disheartening to see people that wanted to have a, a legitimate, logical discussion um, and just it, be unable to do so. So I, I ended up making the uh, page the Black Flag Coalition and figured, you know, oh, you know, if I could get 50 people in here that are, you know, willing to have a good chat, you know, like, that'd be cool, you know, just as a, a place to, you know, I guess, leave the animosity at the door and just talk with people and kind of understand that, you know, we have a lot more in common than not in a lot of ways. Um, and to my surprise, it ended up growing by, like, 200 members a day for the first three days and, you know, we're up to about... I think almost 800 at this point, but, um, yeah, so it kind of tapered off there after the first few days, but, uh, I couldn't believe how quickly it grew. Right. So, and how long, I, mean, uh, I wasn't the only one that felt that way. <laughs> right. Uh, so how long were you, uh, would you say you've been uh, an ANCAP now for, is that, is that well, what you call yourself? I wouldn't even necessarily, um, label myself as such, I guess, uh, more than anything, I, tend to lean towards the, the black flag side of things, and um, I practice agorism in my daily life just because I feel it's the most practical real-life application of anarchism with, you know, in the here and now, you know, just with, you know, the state still existing and all that kind of stuff. I feel like, you know, if you're going to walk the walk and talk the talk in the here and now, it's going to probably boil down to agorism. Um, you, know, you, you know, if you want to subvert the state and not pay taxes and things like that, you got to kind of be able to do your own thing. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm from California. And what part? From uh, Lo uh, Long Beach. Long Beach. Okay, cool. Is there a, a anarchist community there? Um, not so much in Long Beach. I mean, I've got a few friends that are, uh, you know, like-minded individuals and um, the surrounding area, but uh, for the most part, you see a lot more of them out in uh, out in Los Angeles than you do in Long Beach. Right. Have you ever, um, outside of uh, Long Beach, I guess in your travels, have you ever uh, gone to an anarcho-communist uh, collective? Uh, gone into uh, check out what kind of activities they're into, uh, the social norms that they engage in, or any of the like. Um. Not so much in person. Um, I did do uh, a few things when I was living out in Seattle that uh, you know, were more along the lines of uh, you know, activism and stuff like that. Um, like what? You know, there was a lot of like the, uh, the black bloc guys there and stuff like that, which a lot of those guys tend to lean more towards the anarcho-communist side. But I've never really seen... Um, any sort of uh, collective on either side of the fence really come together thus far, at least not in any sort of meaningful manner. So you, um, I'm sorry, you said you saw um, you saw Black Block in Seattle? Right, there was a... For the World Trade, was, Trade Center or the uh, IMF? Um, what was that? 
honestly, all I remember was them taking over downtown and, uh, <laughs> you know, smashing out, you know, the Nike store window. And smashing all that good smashing stuff. store windows, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, you know, uh, a lot of people tend to, you know, it's one of those discussions that come up a lot in the, the coalition discussions or, you know, what's your actual idea of direct action? And that tends to vary a lot, whether it's, you know, throwing shit at the Federal Reserve or, you know, smashing store windows, or is it not paying your taxes and creating networks with other people and subverting the state through, you know, uh, financial means or is it you know handing out pamphlets and flyers and booklets and, right. booklets and that kind of stuff and you know trying to win hearts and minds and uh, you know so you ever meet it, any uh ancap groups uh, in seattle or anywhere else um a lot of the ancaps that i've met tend to intermingle with a lot of libertarian groups that i've seen um just because it's kind of a you know I guess uh, as like-minded as you're going to get. Uh, yeah, I think the the closest thing to an ANCAP uh, or libertarian collective that um, we've seen on a large scale so far is if uh, if and when the Free State Project ends up working out. That's looking pretty promising. They're about to uh, hit their final goal with that. So I could see that being the, the most meaningful collective uh, thus far. Of minarchism, right? Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's all minarchist um, for right. the most part, but there are a lot of, uh, you know, again, because ANCAPs tend to uh, work alongside a lot of libertarians and stuff like that, kind of the, uh, people the who odd, are, cousin. Yeah, I've noticed that. People who are desperate and lonely, uh, who cannot champion their own cause, uh, tend to compromise principles for politics and thus find seek alliances or coalitions with uh, other groups. Uh, and I've seen a lot of uh, lonely ANCAPs do the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a lot of statists and denials out there who call themselves uh, anarchists but still advocate for political rulers. Yeah, I see a lot of, uh, um, to say it, sad stuff going out there in that world. Yeah, no, I agree. And, um, you know, that's why I kind of wanted, uh, another reason why, you know, started the Black Black Coalition was just so that, um, you know, regardless of what side of the fence you were on, you could at least find a uh, fellow anarchists to talk to and learn something from and brainstorm with, you know, throw around ideas and stuff like that for whatever subject, you know, you happen to have on your mind at the time. Um, and it's gone really well so far, you know, aside from, you know, the occasional troll that sneaks in and tries to, um, you know, start slinging mud and rehashing the same old tired arguments and stuff yeah i have like a that. couple i have a couple of my friends who uh who are in there who are already telling me that a lot of the mud slinging is coming from ancoms and um, them getting banned um continuously from that sort of stuff and it's the ancaps trying to have this kind of civil discussion uh so uh, empathy it's honestly been from both sides of the fence to be quite honest uh you know you get it, there seems to be a lot of um hard feelings and resentments and kind of old wounds still lingering around. But I think the longer that something like this actually stands, uh, the more that you'll see people trying to actually mitigate arguments and stuff like that, where it's like, Hey guys, come on, you know, like let's, let's actually have a discussion here instead of just the same old tired. You're not a real anarchist crap, you know, cause it gets old, you know, it never gets anywhere. Well, I have never seen a measure of success with the ANCOMs going anywhere, and I've never seen anything with uh, political advocacy going anywhere, with people who compromise and go with the Libertarian Party. Um, there, there is no measure of success in either uh, parts in that area. And so to, to what ends uh, is it that you're looking for um, people on Facebook to talk to each other about anarchism? Are, are you um, trying to, uh, where, where are you trying to go with that? Well. I guess just to clarify, when when I think of anarchism, I take it all the way back to guys like um, like Homer, you know, and the original usage of anarchos, just meaning one without a ruler. Very simply put, you know, like do yes or no? Do you believe in self ownership and you know the the you know individual liberty? Uh, do you believe that anyone has any natural or inherent right to lord over anyone else you know yes or no do you believe in 
the state. Um, and I think that that's the very basic common denominator that a lot of us tend to um, kind of forget about when we start delving into uh, personal politics. Because at this point, it's like, I had a buddy that gave me a really good analogy. He said, uh, you know, right now we're at fourth down with 99 yards to go. Let's get to the five yard line and then we can figure about personal politics. You know, because at this point, it's all theory anyway. Um, what do you there mean? is no, I mean, in the sense that there is no stateless society. Um, in order for any anarchist to be able to fulfill their, um, I guess, their ideal lifestyle, the first thing that you have to deal with is the existence of the state. You know, and as long as the state exists, none of us are going to get what we want. Um, well, I, I would say it doesn't help if those people who are mentioning are filling along those pegs or those holes in your description of uh, who is an anarchist uh, still compromise and advocate for political rulers. Um, this whole arguments of Homer and all these people pass this you know, uh, argument from antiquity their strategy and the way that they find the world around them have led to no measure of success. The fact that we were born as tax slaves meant that their ideas and their way of bringing about the state have failed. Otherwise, we would not have this conversation or discussion. Uh, so I find the litmus test then should be, must be, uh, you can tell if someone is an anarchist if they advocate for political rulers, if they support slave masters. Right, And what I find with ANCOMs, and I've been dealing with ANCOMs since 2006 for a very, very long time, and uh, in their communities, in their bookstores like the Brian McKenzie Info Shop in Washington, D.C., like Red Emma's Bookstore in Baltimore, and in many others, and checking out the communities. And then checking out the ones here in Richmond. And what I find uh, continuously within those groups is uh, a lot of the same thing you find with other status groups and other status political organization. So advocating for political rulers, especially when it necessarily uh, becomes so when you advocate for minimum wage. I've seen one advocate at a rally, and comes there, at a rally advocating for minimum wage, which means that you need a political ruler to advocate for those legislations and those, those body work of, uh, of bills um, to then use the police states to enforce them onto everyone else. Right, right. So ANCAPs, but I mean, I can make the same argument with, with ANCAPs Where? for Rand, ANCAPs for Rand Paul. No, 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 no. There are no ANCAPs advocating for Rand Paul. There are statists in denial advocating for Rand Paul. There are statists that advocate for political rulers. There are no ANCOMs out there. The moment they stop advocating for political rulers, they can take the AND part with it. Uh, there are statists in denial and there are statists out there. I've never seen an ANCAP do that. I would never call one. There is no one here in Richmond. We have over 100 anarcho-capitalists, free market anarchists here in Richmond. None of them advocate for political rulers. None of them advocate for the party affiliation, gang parties that, they, that come with that. We have a stateless society here, functioning and growing for nearly four years now. We don't make compromises with that. Now, well, what I yeah, find, so, so I want to... Uh, a group that I would say is um, in the minority as far as just uh, being able to have such a uh, high population per capita, I guess, of ANCAPs in uh, a localized area. And that definitely gives you an edge and it gives you some um, reliance on one another just for networking and um, all that for just your daily needs and all that stuff. So. You know, which is awesome, um, but, but you know that's. A, but you can't get there if you compromise. You can't get there if the message is not consistent. If it's not universal, you can't. Anarchy is not sometimes without political rulers. Sometimes, if it's my friend wanting to be a political ruler, or I myself want to be your political ruler, or vie for the throne of tyranny. Yeah, of course, it's never going to go anywhere. The message is not universal. This is why Occupy failed. This is why right. a lot of movements failed because. You can take one exception to their measures if you don't universalize it and anyone can come in and bastardize it. Anyone can come in and change it to mean something else. This is why uh, the strategy movement fails. This is why a lot of groups and organizations fail. Uh, ours has been has shown have to succeed because of the consistency and the commitment we have to principles, to, to anarchy. Without exception, there is no Ron Paul advocacy or there's no Rand Paul advocacy. There's no Libertarian oh. Party uh, alliance or coalition or any of that like. 
If you want to succeed I, in, uh, I know quite a few ANCAPs that, on, that on the, no, 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 on the internet, sure, on Facebook, sure, in Richmond, none. Well, well, none. okay, in Richmond, but I'm I'm speaking in in uh, broad terms here. Because yeah, I, I hear. Yeah, so you're talking about lonely people out there on the internet who who are desperate. People who are socially inept, people who don't know how to champion their own cause. Yeah, there are lonely people who are desperate, and uh, yeah, they they'll they don't know what else to do, so they'll keep doing the same thing that uh, has been people have been doing for for many decades, for centuries. Maybe we can achieve it in politics when there's no factual evidence to show that politics has ever set anyone free. None. They're just perpetuating the fraud. No, I'm not just dis I'm not disagreeing with that. <laughs> um, you know, personally, you know, I don't I don't vote. Um, you know, I don't file a W-2 with anybody. I don't pay taxes or anything like that. The only taxes I personally pay are uh, sales tax just because they're kind of unavoidable where I live. But, um, you know, I think that it's just kind of a, uh, I guess, a hasty generalization because, yeah, sure, you probably have a larger amount of uh, ANCOMs that are willing to vote for guys like Bernie Sanders on the um, premise that he's a socialist and all right. that. But um, even still, you know, like I said, I, I've also seen it from the other side of the fence where there's ANCAPs that are willing to vote for Ron or Rand Paul that are willing to associate um, and help out with libertarian causes and things like that. And so I think that there's definitely going to be some... Where do you some, draw the line? Um, well, that's that's a question for the individual, in well, my yeah. opinion. You know, for like you, that's, yeah. For the individual, you. Know, you. Yeah, that, uh, that's a question to the individual. Personally, I don't vote. You know, I don't. No, no. I mean, that. you as Dane, where do you draw the line? I mean, this is a uh, you know uh, identity, right? This is a law of identity. You know, you can tell by what what is an object if it matches other descriptions or the characteristic characteristics, right? If I'm going to say I'm an atheist. But I go to church every Sunday, I count my prayer beats, I go into the confession booths, I pray all the time, I carry a Bible with me, but I still tell my friends I'm an atheist. It's like, I'm going to call you a liar. <laughs> I don't care what kind yeah. of uh, fibs you're going to be uh, passing out there, right? There are liars out there. There are yeah. people who will uh, put out misleading information out there. If I see an anarchist saying, well, yeah, someone, a self-proclaimed anarchist, I'm an anarchist, but I'm going to go vote. Uh, Ron Paul, I'm going to vote for Ron Paul. I'm going to vote for Bernie Sanders. I'm going to participate in, in the same rituals. So it's like, look, I'm going to call you a status in denial. Where do you yeah, then, I mean, then draw the yeah, distinction and what is and what is not an anarchist then? Um, yeah, I think that a lot of that also has to do with means to an end. Um, that's something that anyone, has, uh, you know, everyone's had to deal with. You know, like, uh, do the ends justify the means? Is this a way for me to ultimately get, uh, you know, get what I want out of the, any given situation, you know, you know, just kind of taking because there's, a, there's the side of it that is dealing with principles and, uh, you know, personal beliefs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's also dealing with reality a lot of times, you know, which is again, why I personally believe that agorism is the best way to, um, be an anarchist in, you know, the here and now, uh, in the society that we have. Uh, but you know, you have the people that, you know, lie further one way or the other to the left or the right, or, um, you know, and so they're going to utilize whatever, uh, whatever means they have to ultimately achieve their ends. Uh, so, you know, I, I think there's, uh, I, I think that it honestly comes from both sides and, uh, you know, to what degree or what capacity or how far either side's willing to take it or how far any individual is willing to take it. Um, you know, that's entirely dependent on the circumstances at hand, but, uh, I don't feel like it's my place to really it say, is, it you know, is your oh, place. not, not is an your anarchist place. or, you know, whatever, like that's not, because right now, like I said, it is primarily just theory because... No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. It's not just theory, right? You're, you're practicing agorism, right? Agorism is the application of that theory. Right. And you're living proof of that in what you just told me. And there's a lot of people who uh, who need to do that in the applying just the theory aspect of it. When you when you don't and you continue the same rituals, just like every other status, you're, you're no different than any of those groups. Uh, well, it becomes no different. How do, how do you differentiate my, what is and what is not an anarchist? And then when somebody asks you... Uh, is that an anarchist? Do you say yes? 
Well, then that means I should stay with my own political allegiance to my party because uh, it doesn't matter. Everyone here is still advocating for political rulers. Why should I switch teams? Why should I not uh, stop supporting this political team myself? Why would you then uh, be, be agnostic about it and tell him, well, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, and just say, no, you're right. He is advocating for a political ruler. Anarchy is against political rulers, without political rulers, not <laughs> supporting them whenever we feel like it. I think there has been no measure of success uh, for over 100 years since Ancons have taken the term of the, of the word anarchy for a long time because of that, because of that inability to take a strong principle stance against all political rulers. Not sometimes, not with exceptions. Exceptions, that's what government does in terms of... Right, and they've also rule. been deal, uh, dealing with all this stuff on their own with, you know, you're looking at population size, you know, uh, of, you know, uh, I guess you could say like the Ancom group versus the population size of the society as a whole and all that. Um, I think that it would honestly be more effective if you had, you know, every flavor of anarchist along the way working together um, in order to be able to network and rely on one another, just like, you know, you have enrichment with just your core group of ANCAPs. Um, if you could do that on a larger scale, you know, from coast to coast where you have you know, anarchists of every um, every fa uh, facet of the philosophy relying on one another. It gives you a larger network to to work with in supporting the state, and uh, you, you get what I, uh, where I'm going with. The, I get it, Dane. Uh, but I'm, like just, it. I'm, I'm I get where you're going with it. I'm just saying we don't need it. We don't need the baggage that comes with ancoms. Uh, we don't need the check your privilege nonsense that comes with ANCOMs. The shaming people and making them feel guilty for, for the pigment color of their skin, that comes with ANCOMs. That comes if you ever have a moment to hang out within those collectives and see the activities and the language that they use with one another. Um, r r r r r those are damaging social norms that cannibalize each other. Uh, that's not something I want to invite in this group. You know, we want to talk about closed door policies. Yes, bad, but Bad stuff like that, bad social norms or cannot be a part of the future. I have no problem talking with incomes outside of that, sure. Maybe to help them let go of the communist side of it, right? The flavor of communism that they advocate for. Absolutely. I have, I have no problem talking, but that sort of stuff has to kind of let go. If you want to be part of the future, you know, there's just no place for that. I don't well, find uh, the way I see it, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say that there's no place for it because, um, to me, diversity is essential. Uh, that's the whole reason why democracy doesn't work is because you have so many people with differing um, thoughts and beliefs and um, preferred, you know, uh, societal structures and things like that, all fighting and vying for power. And you know, my team's going to win and your team's going to lose. And you know, they're trying to impose their beliefs on the society as a whole. And that's why democracy doesn't work. And I think that a big part of um, anarchism is, you know, the freedom to say, hey, I personally want to live in a capitalist society or I want to live in a mutualist society or I want to live in a communist society or socialist or whatever the case may be. But you need to be able to allow people to pursue that interest or that preferred societal structure. Um, and if it doesn't work... It doesn't work, and it fails, and that's on the people involved. I would not um, be encouraging people to seek a course of failure that leads to starvation and harm. I'm not going to say, hey, I have a, a great car here, you know, <laughs> fossil fuels and whatnot, you know, it doesn't create any, this is, this is the best car, cheapest car. I'm not going to advocate for some piece of shit model out there for people to drive that, that injures people and has recalls all the time. I'm not going to advocate for failure and say, yeah, you could try failure. No, I'm going to be honest with you. In the same way I'm honest with my brothers and my best friends and, and my family uh, and tell them uh, the reasons why I would not. Not, well, go ahead and try it. Yeah, and we'll see. <laughs> you, you hurt yourself and, uh, and, and hurt others along the way. Well, sure, you can, you can warn people and have uh, legitimate discussions and, and tell them what your concerns are. Uh, but anything more than that, and it defeats the purpose 
of anarchism in the principal sense of without a ruler. Because at what point do you draw that line of saying, when are you telling someone what to do and what not to do? You know, you have to have that uh, even still. You, no, no, the, the, line is, the, the, the line is very simple. In our organization, we're a non-political organization. We don't advocate for political groups. The line is drawn in the very foundation when it was started. That's it. You want to join our group? Great. <laughs> Let go of the idea uh, of the need of, of slave masters, of other people well, running and ruling your life. Great. After that, as long as it's consensual, anything goes. Right? right. For a free society based on consent. Right. right. And that's what I'm saying. In a free society based on consent is that if, you know, just for the sake of argument, say, you know, you want to live in your anarcho-capitalist society and um, say, hypothetically, I wanted to live in an anarcho-socialist or communist society. You can warn me as, uh, until you're blue in the face, hey, I think it's a really bad idea to go live in this society because of reasons X, Y, and Z. Um, but you can't physically stop me from choosing to collectivize with other people. You can't dictate for me not to go live with those people. And you and I may never see eye to eye, but... You know, otherwise, what's what's the difference between um, the political rulers we have now and you becoming a political ruler um, in an anarchist society? I, I'm I'm trying to trying to figure out a better way to word this, but basically, right, right. Well, let, let me let me give you a example A that you're forgetting from your X, Y, and Z. Ancoms do not respect private property. So I have my Ancom society here. Ancoms will not respect the boundaries of uh, my house, my the, the fence line. They find it that the land is something you cannot own. Personal property, they call it. Anything else, yeah, sure. But land, no. That is an ideology. These are a group of people who will trespass, who will initiate that aggression, who do not grant the same courtesy and respect that Ancaps would have towards them, absolutely. But right, in and, their point of view, and, and, especially mutualists, when you leave your house for a week, for a day, well, you're not using it to its maximum utility, and that allows anyone else to come over and take over. And that well, is not something that I've I can uh, be peaceful with or uh, have a coalition or ally with people who will not respect my private property. Who will See, not respect, here's the thing uh, is that from discussions that I've had on the coalition with ANCOMs and mutualists and uh, you know the like, uh, they've explicitly told me like no like if if there was an anarcho-capitalist society and we had our anarcho-communist society we would do our thing over here we would have no reason to go over there and start shit and blah 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 um and it basically boils down to like okay we're gonna do our thing over here you guys do your thing over there and if we can come to terms as far as trade and all that kind of stuff you know like say i lived in an anarcho-capitalist society i would be absolutely willing to uh, barter you know means of production for whatever their uh, their anarcho-communist society produces an abundance of and then turn around and sell that item you know and there are ways that we can work together and stuff like that but it's it boils down to um, well personally I think voluntarism is kind of inherent in anarchism uh, that's just me uh, just the idea that like any any exchange that you and I do is because you and I choose to do it. it. Doesn't really have anything to do with our political beliefs or societal structure. It's that you and I wanted to come to terms for some product or some service, whether money is involved or not. Whether um, you know, none of that stuff is really all that relevant to the basic principle. Um, you know, so you're saying. As, you're saying that you know uh, mutualists and ancoms that will respect private property. property? Absolutely, because but it, that no longer the makes them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait one second. That no longer makes them ancoms or mutualists. That makes them ancaps, and that's fine. As long as they respect private property, sure, go for it. I don't care what you call yourself, well, as long as they're acting that, consistently with that. They already have their own society in this theoretical anarchy. You know, they have their theoretical yeah. society. They, 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 and ANCOMs do have groups. Uh, ANCOMs uh, do have uh, organizations out there. Um, I, I know a lot of them. Here in Richmond, the organizations are gone. Um, we're the last ones standing here in Richmond. For a long time, it's always been ANCOMs. Never been an ANCAP uh, organization. Nowhere in, in the United States. 
Uh, and in terms of mutualism, I've never heard of a mutualist organization or community out there. Um, I would suggest, I would strongly say that uh, having these discussions, great, good. I'll, I'll talk to anyone, absolutely. Uh, but I think the focus should not be more on trying to create more internet Facebook friends and uh, out there on the internet, only for the same reason that when you unplug from your computer, when you turn it off and go step out to the real world, I'd rather make some real friends and see this real community, not something that's on a pixels on my computer screen. I think the focus on here is to be starting your own ANCAP organization there or community and building that up and see what happens. I, if inevitably an income organization bumps heads with that. Yeah, great. Yeah, we'll talk. But we'll, we'll, maybe we could do something. And I, but, and I don't disagree with that. And that's that's all well and good. But sometimes you just don't have enough people in an area to do something like that. And so you have to, um, you know, broaden your, uh, your uh, I guess, who you're willing to affiliate with and associate with. And, um, you know, there are... You don't have enough people in your area. How many people live there in uh, Long Beach? Well, no, I, I mean, I mean, of a like mind that are already kind of in the know, that already have uh, principles that you know agree with yours and stuff like it that. No, no, no. Um, it doesn't start off that way. No. <laughs> no, and so that's what I'm our, saying is our, that the, you know, the majority have... of our group here in Richmond, former socialists, former Republicans, Democrats, and they're not former ANCAPs, former Libertarian Party, or anything like that. They're, they're really not ANCAPs who just kind of come and found each other and, and start right. a whole thing. What we have here is um, the start of local chapters where it's people who are wanting to work together and have a beer, and they might not be of the same. Um, personal philosophy but they still at the you know at the core level are still anarchists and are willing to go out and uh pass out flyers or you know take direct action in different measures um in a manner of you know just being anti-state is that what you're doing out there in long beach helping to build this community uh trying to bring people towards anarchism to be against political rulers right well we're trying to we're trying to do that across the nation here well right? no no oh. across the nation it's oh man that's that's all the thing about trying to change the world that's that's a huge problem the only thing you could do is start with your interpersonal relationship start where you already well, are in your community that's Focus. what i'm saying if people come here they're willing to have that open discussion and be civil about it to begin with and then they figure oh hey there's three people that I found on this page that actually live really close to me. And now instead of just being, you know, a lonely and capital, lonely and or lonely, whatever. Now there's a group of seven just anarchists who well, are willing to, you know, get together on the basic premise of being anti-state of teaching people about why taxation is wrong, why this, that, and the other is wrong. Why, um, you know, democracy has really failed us and, you know, bringing, just bringing the principal idea of, of anarchism out into the public and kind of getting rid of that whole longstanding smear campaign that's been going on where, you know, you look on TV and it's always, you know, anarchism is always synonymous with chaos and disorder. And destruction. Thanks to who? Thanks to who? Thanks to the black block, people smashing store windows, throwing Molotov cocktails. Thanks to who? The Ancoms. Fair enough. Ancoms. Fair enough, but there's they also... They have destroyed the image. I would say, let them fail. Let I, I them think succeed the has, where they have failed. And just as much, if not more, um, as far as uh, being uh, degrading to the, the core philosophies involved of just self-ownership and, you know, being responsible for yourself and your actions and things like that. You know, I think that, that a lot of it has to do with... Um, just how how the media has portrayed it to the public, um, you know, even in the events that you know, ANCOMs have done things that were destructive and things like that, um, they tend to leave out the motivating factors behind why they did, you know, whatever actions they took. Um, M. L. Goldman supporting uh, the assassination. Uh, a businessman, yeah, motivation is there. Yeah, they're, they want to use the same tactic that government uses themselves. They become no different than the status that they're trying to fight against. The black bloc smashing store windows that have nothing to do with uh, the IMF or uh, the World Trade Center and a lot of these protests that go on uh, uh, back then, especially right. in Syria. I don't necessarily agree with those. Um, 
you know, I think that, that would be better directed towards, you know, the Federal Reserve or something of the like. Um, I wouldn't even direct and, you know, anything. Yelling at buildings do not make them disappear. Yelling at no, buildings does I not agree. turn everyone into anarchists. Uh, destroying yeah. a church doesn't make everyone in that community an atheist. Right. No, and, and I don't disagree with you on that. Um, you know, and, and the thing is, is that we're trying to get this on a constructive level. You know, get people together that want to spread a message through non-destructive, non-violent means, uh, kind of removing that stigma that anarchism has developed over the years, um, and, and figuring out in what ways we can work together. Um, you know, and it's, it's a building process, and we don't have all the answers yet, but we're you know, definitely plugging away at it and trying to be um, constructive with it, you know, trying to be positive about it. And, uh, you know, it, you know, again, you still have a lot of the true believers from either side that just aren't willing to have the, um, that aren't uh, open to that discussion as of yet. And, and you know, it, it, it's a matter of figuring out, okay, we already know what we don't agree upon. What do we agree upon? What can we do about it in the here and now that would be beneficial to everyone, you know, because bickering online doesn't help, you know, squabbling with, um, you know, people and not making any progress in a logical debate that doesn't help. But what does help is when, you know, you can actually find eight other people in your area um, and be able to, you know, get together to start forming those kinds of relationships. And, you know, if, if one person is swayed over philosophically to one side or the other, then, you know, cool, whatever. But, you know, it's more about just working with what we have and, uh you know, who we've got in our local area and just finding those, those mutually beneficial arrangements between people. Um, I would say, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I was just, I'm going to say, ignore them, let it go. You're, you're the person right now. You're the person who gets a lot of this stuff, create your organization outside from the people who have trashed the word anarchy, who have, uh, have brought it to become associated with chaos and destruction, with smashing store windows like people like Black Block for, for Ancons for, for over 100 years now. I'll say, look, ignore, let, let them go. What, what's wrong with you as the individual having the strength and courage to go against the strength and having uh, to, the courage, the bravery to do something, to go all the way, create an organization that is principled without exceptions, and drawing new people in. You don't need the baggage that comes with that. What's wrong with you <laughs> creating something that, that, that is in you and doing all these things that you're telling me about and reaching out in your own community and something that has real respect for private property, for self-ownership, for, for a real free society based on consent with all the baggage of trying to, the uh, social norms that, that comes with ANCONS of uh, cannibalism, of uh, social guilt, of, uh, of shaming each other, it comes with uh, checking your privilege, it comes with uh, a lot of these, a lot of the people there, of course, come from middle class background, which drives me insane that they want to strive for poverty coming from a good area of income from their family. But they want to come and associate themselves with people who are poor by trying to look and dress poor just as them. Instead of saying, you know what, you should be just as wealthy. You should be just as up here with me and pulling them up in that level instead. That's all I see in terms of these income societies and income communities. That's not the kind of future or kind of group that I want to be with. What's wrong with you, Dane, just removing all of that? Yeah, we can have a group on Facebook where we can talk and chat, but to focus and ignore everyone else and market your own message in a way that cannot be overtaken by anyone, that can that is not no longer associated with the baggage and the, the negative uh, media or, or marketing that Ancons have put themselves in. Why, 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 why embrace that? Why try to take that over? Why try it's, to uh, see you can try to fix it's that? Not, it's, it's more a matter of trying to um, find those people that, you know, because there are, I've actually met a few ANCOMs that don't necessarily agree with a lot of the direct action tactics and stuff like that as far as uh, why do they disagree destruction with? and stuff like that. Um, it, and I think a lot of it boils down to the idea that morality is based on self-interest. Um, that, you know, 
the reason why people don't run down the street stabbing people in the face isn't because there's a law against it. It's because it that's against your self-interest. Either you're going to hurt someone else or you're going to get yourself hurt or killed in the process. You know, it's just that that's that's what morality is in its truest, most basic form is it's self-interest. Um, and they understand that, that, you know, going out there and destroying stuff like that, it doesn't, it doesn't fix anything. It only adds on to the stigma and it's against their self-interest that they're probably going to get shot or thrown in a cage or whatever, you know? And, and so they understand that. And, um, you know, the, the reason that they're in comes is because they don't like the idea of money. And that if, if there was a, um, you know, if, if anarchy was to come about that they would like to live in a collective that was, you know, communist to nature and all that, and that they didn't use money and all that, but they have no interest in going and raiding another neighboring society simply because they're capitalists. If, if, you mind your business, I mind mine, then there, you know, nobody, nobody's getting hurt. Nobody's being taken advantage of. Nobody's having their property stolen or destroyed because nobody wants to have their property stolen or, uh, stolen or destroyed. Um, yes, you know, so I have met people like that, that are on the AMCOM side of things. They just don't like the idea of, uh, the corporations running the society and all that. And they just want to be able to live in their, collective and do their thing and mind their own business and live in peace. You know, and it's, I think that there's more of those types of people out there than you would think, but they get drowned out by the, you know, super edgy teenagers and, you know, the rabble, of, you know, just kind of the, you know, the groups that want to be destructive and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I try not to make any hasty generalizations with people and let them speak for themselves instead of letting their, because I've met just as many asshole and caps as I've met asshole and comms, you know, and it, I take it with the individual and their thoughts and their actions and, uh, their words, you know, and I, I base it off of that. Um, you know, there's a, both sides have good points and both sides have bad points. And, you know, I, I don't expect every single person to fully adhere to any of them um, from either side of the fence. You know, it's just, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good way, I guess, to, to kind of describe the, uh, some of the conversations or just the general notions that I've gotten from them. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that just want to be able to live their lives. You know, they have their personal preference for what kind of society they would like to live in. But the basic premise is that they just want to be able to live their lives the way they think would be best. And, you know, they're willing to work with other people in order to, um, you know, meet those ends to, to get to a place where uh, sure, yeah. I, we could all do that. Right. Uh, and of course I find the problem in all this is that, uh, <laughs> the way they've marketed themselves <laughs> failure, uh, let's succeed where they have failed. Uh, and in terms of, uh, recognizing that this is a war, a war that the state has brought upon many peaceful people. So this requires a good strategy and how to get us out of this war. And to sow any kind of alliance with anarch with uh, communism of any flavor is not going to work. Uh, well, it's me, never not going to get anywhere this. with that. Let me ask you this then: um, Say you were to meet an ANCOM that had really no interest in, you know, again, the theoretical anarchy. They had no interest in taking your personal property. Uh, your private property. They had no interest in smashing your store window. They simply want to live in their, you know, communist collective and do their thing. Do you, would you really have any issue with that? I would. I would tell them you're an ANCAP. Then you respect private property. Welcome, brother. Awesome. Great. <laughs> Remove this communist part from that. <laughs> the I would disagree there. because they. The, it's 
their society is still communist in nature. They're not well, using money. I don't, I don't money. care They're... what kind of a fetish they want to involve <clears throat> in, in sharing property or each other. Go for it, right? Hey, as long as it's consensual. As long as you that... respect private property, that's the only thing that matters. That, 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 that The way that we resolve conflict disputes, you know, either through homesteading or voluntary exchange, best way to do it, peacefully, consensually. Right? Any other right. means, and it advocates for the initiation of force or aggression of some kind. Right, and, and and that's kind of what I'm getting at is that there are those types of ancoms out there's there. There's only that one. Looking... There's only one. One. I've met, I would say, three hand, three, yeah, three hundred ancoms uh, for nearly a decade now in person, not online, in person. Mm -hmm. I've only met one, one good ancom, but he's an ancom out of desperation because the people around him did not happen to be ancaps. He was an ancap before. He was he was into Rothbard and all that stuff. But of course, there's no other ANCAPs for him to associate with. And out of that desperation and loneliness, uh, yeah, sometimes you, you intermingle with some of the, uh, the ANCAPs nearby. And then you start adopting the social norms. And then you try to see if there's a way you can uh, draw a sort of a connection or a coalition between the two. Uh, it doesn't work the other way. Um, so I always see one. And for that one person, yes, <laughs> that, you'll be most welcome. Uh, I, I personally see that as a hasty general uh, generalization. Well, this uh, comes out of not just a Facebook experience, my friend. This comes from actually meeting these people in person, not on Facebook. Not just so much a hasty generalization. Well, here's the terms or here's the Facebook page that anarchist means and trying to defer from these people. No, I, I know these people. I've met them in, in person. This is the uh, same thing with the Libertarian Party, which is why we cannot have an alliance with the Libertarian Gang Party as well. For the very same reason. This is not a hasty realization. This is tacit experience, which a lot of ANCAPs are missing because they have not yet had the moment of uh, to, to see what it's like to be in those groups and to see how they cannibalize each other and, and ruin and, and run over each other. Right. You know, and, you know, again, I'm going, to, I'm going off of the talks that I've had over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, and big group discussions and stuff like that. And I'm just finding that there are more uh, more people out there um, that you know may ascribe to one facet of anarchism over another and all that, but still have that basic understanding that hey, if I want to be able to live my life how I want to live it, I need to be able to or I need to allow other people to do the same and pursue that self interest. Um, you know, for, for themselves and for their posterity and all that. Um, and that, you know, basically by using aggression, it's, it's going to be detrimental to that central ideology. So I have met people that were, I guess what you would call peaceful and comms or whatever, that just the only reason they're and comms is because they want that that's their, their personal preference for a society. It's not that they want to go out and, you know, smash windows with black block or anything like that. It's just that they think that if that type of society were to come about, that that's what, where they would want to be. Well, see, and I don't see anything inherently wrong with that. You know, that's, you know, I think that, you know, um, being able to choose is a very essential factor to all this. Absolutely. Um, but it's not going to work. Uh, there has been an organization that has already tried that before the Black Flag Coalition. You can look at Attack to System. Have you heard of them? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, so they've been around for, I'll say, close to a decade now. Uh, it's run by a friend of mine, Keith Preston. And uh, no, I, I applaud him for trying to push forth pan-anarchism. Uh, Paul, for trying to see that we have a common enemy that is called the state and see where we can get to in terms of uh, uniting, uh, you know, people usually say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And yeah. so there have been people and organizations to have tried this before uh, your new upstart <laughs> coalition. And so when I when I bring up these ideas and why it cannot work, it's not 
uh, over hastily generalization. These are tacit experiences which draws me to a lot of good judgment, and especially where we need our organization to grow and how we market ourselves and how we knock out the and concept from Richmond, how now we have many, many business associating anarchy with respecting their storefront businesses, with respecting um, their self-ownership and the things that they create, the thing they, they, they've uh, labored and sweat over. Uh, that that right. we're, we're here for, for, we're not here to destroy, we're here to build. And uh, there have been, again, organizations have been trying, the tactic system is one of them. Uh, and and there's, I've seen no measure of success. Uh, sorry to say that, Keith Preston, if you're watching this, um, in terms of that, uh, where, where, where is it? I, I see uh, a website where they share similar articles, but no community. You know, pixels on a computer screen is not a community, <laughs> it's not a subculture. Uh, if we can turn it off your computer and it's no longer there, it's not, it doesn't exist. Well, um, I think you're kind of discrediting the uh, the power of the internet. Uh, yeah, I, I am. Yeah, sorry. I mean, uh, people uh, want to live their second world life. <laughs> That's not a real life. That's not a real world. I think no, these are I, I mean it just in the sense of a tool. To me, the internet is, is the most powerful tool to network. That yeah, you can human, network. The humankind has ever created. I mean, just imagine what guys like Confucius and Socrates would have been able to accomplish over a Skype chat. You know, like that. Oh no, no, they they continue the whole charade saying that you need a philosopher king. You know, so fuck those guys. Uh, they wanted to be uh, living consistently in the stuff that they were advocating true in terms of saying that uh, in terms of philosophy where it should lead to they would not have compromised they compromised out of death uh, Plato especially after Socrates died uh, yeah the internet is a tool and which the government uses just as well uh, to our own detriment uh, right and network, that's why I'm trying to you know do something to start to use it to our advantage I'm sure that there's been uh, quite a few organizations that have popped up that are doing or tried to do essentially the same thing that um, is going on with the uh, Black Black Coalition. Right. So, but I think that it's something that's been boiling under the surface for some time now, especially with all the animosity that you find online. And um, I mean, really, anybody within any of the anarchist subdivisions, you know, knows full well about the online animosity that goes on back and forth and all that. <laughs> not really um, here in Richmond. <laughs> Majority here in Richmond well, I'm, don't, I'm don't know, online. don't care, doesn't affect them. <laughs> people, strangers on the internet. Well, I mean, <laughs> nothing. Online. Yeah, again, desperate people, lonely people on the internet and in the interweb worlds. Absolutely. Right, so and why, I, not, I think, why not try to turn that around? Right, what I'm trying to say, I think, uh, having these discussions online, fine. I don't think the focus or any of this stuff should be to try to create more Facebook friends. It should be to balance that out, your internet time and the real life time you have outside of that and start creating those communities that you, you talk about. Start championing your own cause. Start yeah, bringing these theories into the real, as it were, in terms when you bring up agorism. Which is a, which is a very big part of the, the discussion we're trying to have here is because... This at least opens up a uh, channel for dialogue between people where they're not getting bombarded by, um, you know, the rabble from either side. It's a place where they can actually have a legitimate discussion, find people in their areas and figure out, hey, what can we do to work together? You know, to, uh, you know, what, if, what common goals do we have? And that's what this boils down to is, is providing a, uh, a platform for open discussion and finding people in your local area. You know, they might be a different flavor than you, but at the very least you're finding people that you can do something constructive with as a means to an end. Uh, and, and I think uh, maybe that's something you'll have to figure out. And many of the people on there will, will figure out in the long term that I, I would say cannot work. Talking to people, sure, absolutely, I'll talk to anyone. Having these discussions, I think it's great to have a forum for that. Um, but in terms of if you want to have a real measure of success, it's not going to work because of the new people that you want to bring in, in terms of that future of anarchy, uh, it's going to look, well, I guess you can have uh, a free society that has respect for private property, you can have communism, I guess. This is, uh, you know, it, it leads into a lot of uh, muddled confusion and what is anarchy. These people are advocating for minimum wage, I guess that's okay. Uh, and these, these people, they call this with ANCAPs, of course, are, are saying no. Uh, these people say Bernie Sanders, go for it. Uh, and, and doesn't lead to anywhere because it doesn't start off with a universalized, consistent meshes at the very basis then, if we can have disagreements, fine, but at least just universalize the agreement that anarchism is against political rulers.
We do not advocate for political rulers. And then we can figure out anything else beneath that. And that'd be something I'd be happy to, to look into and talk more further with people uh, outside of that, of course. But uh, that's, that's my litmus test. I, yeah, I can't I, compromise with that. You know, and I, I can't speak for each and every individual, but, you know, I, I would assume that not every single and come out there is voting for Bernie Sanders, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'll have to raise that discussion and right. see just out of curiosity, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, that's right. You know, it's, you know, I'm jotting down stuff here, you know, just for, uh, ideas for discussion topics on the page itself and all that. But, um, you know, it's, it, again, boils down to finding those people that are true to that central belief that, you know, state is bad and all that, and that it's, you know, an inherently bad idea that it relies on violence and coercion in order to, to operate and finding those people that, you know, regardless of their personal preference for a societal structure, hold that fact to be true and, you know, are, you know, looking to you know, find people outside of the nor uh, normal circles within, you know, that they normally stride in, you know, because you kind of get stuck in, you know, the, uh, the echo chamber, I guess, you know, you only affiliate with one circle of people because they're of a completely like mind and you never really start dialogue with people from, uh, you know, and I'm speaking, you know, like as a, an echo chamber as far as like ANCAPs or, you know, Agoras or ANCOMs and ANSOX and stuff like that. Right. You really only talk to people in those groups and people don't break out of that echo chamber and start dialogue with one another. Um, you know, so that's, that's really the, the biggest part of all this is let's, let's get a dialogue going. Let's see who's in our area that we can actually meet up with. Who's, who's willing to, you know, work together in a constructive, well thought out manner. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I, I get that. And uh, I think there is a lot of ANCAPs who don't have uh, that tacit experience of actually uh, knowing what it's like to come from the viewpoint or the lens of ANCOMs. Uh, my introduction to anarchy came from hanging out these ANCOM bookstores. Uh, there's never a word of uh, anarcho-capitalism that was ever in there that I ever picked up or any book that they would uh, put on the shelves there. Uh, it wasn't until uh, months later, way after uh, I launched uh, Liberate RVA, that I came across the word anarcho-capitalism. Uh, before that, I considered myself a libertarian anarchist, but I had to let go libertarian because the association of the libertarian party, and that's not something that uh, marketing-wise is going to succeed. Uh, especially in trying to let go of uh, the idea that, you know, politics will not set us free and that we're a non-political organization. There are things I had to let go as well. Uh, and become a free market anarchist and finding a better term to kind of suit that. Anarcho-capitalism came much later. Uh, but I will uh, try to see, <laughs> you, you're mentioning trying to talk with local ANCOMs. There was a local ANCOM that commented on the YouTube, same YouTube video that you commented on and which we're uh, kind of discussing it, I guess, when the topic was broached. Uh, his name is Andre Durazio, and he commented, Nigga, I'm a fucking income in Richmond FFS. And then he says, uh, This nigga doesn't get the concept of personal property. Sounds like a swell guy. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and see, that's the kind of dude that wouldn't last more than five minutes in the coalition. And honestly, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, yeah, one of the awesome things about it is that there's almost been a sense of uh, fraternity or bonding that's come out of it where, you know, it doesn't matter if it's ANCOM or ANCAP. When when a troll comes in and tries to start shit, they end up becoming a laughing stock, and we all have a good chuckle at it, and then they get banned. And it's like, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't really, you know, I mean, We've got ANCAPs laughing at other ANCAPs or ANCOMs laughing at other ANCOMs and we're all doing it together because this guy's just coming in here and being an asshole, you know, plain and simple. And so you they just get laughed that. right out. Uh, you could say that, but then of course I went to this guy's uh, YouTube video and he apparently he makes videos and he's just going out there calling people retarded and uh, just acting like a lot of the other uh, barbarians that I meet out there that comes from the commie flavor of field. But um, I don't know. Uh, in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> yeah, uh, but this is what I mean. The, the kind of uh, the way that they communicate, the kind of way that they uh, that they talk and present themselves. 
why would that why would I invite that in, in, in my tribe? Why would I have someone who's going around calling each other's nigga and, 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 well, yeah, and the way they interact? The That's not something that I think our tribe can benefit from. Well, see, the thing is, is that I would be getting rid of someone like that, not based off of their uh, political or philosophical preferences. I would be doing it based off the merit of the individual, of them being a douchebag. Like, you know, like, okay. it has nothing to do with your preferred societal structure. It has to do with, is this individual an asshole? Do I want him poisoning the well as far as, you know, what we have going, which is a good thing? You know, so that's where I draw the line, not with philosophical uh, preference in a theoretical society. You know, it's, is this guy willing to have a logical debate without mudslinging? Right. So. Okay. Well, Dane, we're uh, closing up on our hour here. Um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's been well, a really good discussion. Great. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you right. very much. <laughs> of course, of course. Thank you for bearing with me. I know some of the questions can be hard. Uh, you're looking forward to uh, the Deadpool movie? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll well, I'll be there in cosplay. Okay, right. <laughs> Actually, there's a Comic Con going on uh, here in Richmond. I'm going to be going there as uh, Rick Sanchez from uh, Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, let's continue having this talk. Uh, you know, tell me what you have uh, gathered from your experience and what you've learned after a couple months of uh, having this uh, putting out there in this kind of forum in which you have these kind of conversations. And uh, let's revisit this topic again sometime. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'll uh, I'll uh, update you periodically and uh, see when you'd like to have another uh, open discussion on it and you know, give you a, an update on how things are going. All right. Sounds good, buddy. Sounds good. Well, uh, best of luck out there in uh, Long Beach, uh, California, man. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll see you at the victory party, my friend. All right. Sounds good. Have a good one. You too, man. Take good care. Left behind, the dollar signs rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?